we are not talking about just a range environment. We are talking about out in the world in a real life situation, like an active shooter, active killer event, particularly with our loved ones and our children present. I'm gonna look around in my environment and I'm gonna go, what is the safest direction that I can point this firearm? And by the way, bad guys make amazing safe directions. <laughs> Is it gonna hurt? Not at all. A few years ago, I went through the process of getting a gun license in Canada. Did I even hit any of them? And for the sake of comparison, I also joined the National Rifle Association. And I learned that Canadians have a very different approach to guns than our neighbors to the south. In Canada, you're either going to the range and having fun, or you're going hunting. <sighs> so there aren't people here who would be buying a gun for self-defense? No. While Canadian citizens aren't legally allowed to carry for self-defense, Americans are encouraged to, especially women. Millions of women are purchasing guns and defending their lives and their families' lives. The NRA and gun manufacturers have aggressively been marketing to American women, now the fastest growing gun demographic in the country. In fact, there are an estimated 12 to 17 million women who own guns in the United States compared to about 275,000 women in Canada. And as the debate over gun violence ramps up in the US, I wondered, is arming more women across the border really keeping anyone safe? So I headed to Texas, the heart of gun culture in America, to talk gun laws with women on both sides of the debate and find out what fears are driving women here to arm themselves. All right, I see a sign of a gun. Our first stop is the annual women's gun conference, A Girl and a Gun. Good morning. Hi, how's it going? It's going well. More than 400 women travel from all over America to celebrate and exercise the Second Amendment. Damn. The event is sponsored by gun companies, and members get to try out everything from the latest accuracy technology to fully automatic rifles. Females are the fastest growing demographic in the gun community. We have chapters across the country. They're the heartbeat of our organization. So they are really there to bring women into shooting. I hit so many targets. It all comes down to the fact that we're empowering you and we will give you support and resources to say, I got this. Good job, ladies. The majority of the courses here are geared towards defensive use of a firearm and are taught by high profile NRA certified instructors. This is where all the self-defense training is taking place. We're heading to a class called the Well-Armed Parent. On the line! We're gonna start out with just five shots on these two-inch circles. A violent criminal, we've seen this over and over and over again in lots of video examples. If they are shooting you, they will shoot through the child. If they are stabbing you, they will stab through the child. If they are beating you, they will beat through the child. And the only way that we can redirect violence is by being more violent. Of the one million licenses to carry handguns in Texas, 250,000 are held by women. And classes like these are growing in popularity, though they aren't required by law. All right, one-handed shooting, let's face it. If I'm controlling a loved one, the vast majority of the shooting that I'm gonna be doing is going to be with one hand. So Amy is my child, right? I'm gonna grab her wrist, pin it to my side, draw, present out to the target, two to the chest, one to the head. Ah! It's kind of surreal to watch this woman teach these other women how to shoot one-handed in case you're holding your baby while you need to shoot your gun. So you're gonna grab her wrist and just pin it right to your magazine pouch, right there. Can you just explain the scenarios where people would need this type of training? A lot of people are worried about home invasion kind of things, um, out and about, Walmart shopping, that kind of thing. Active shooters are huge in the media right now. I just sort of explained some of Canada's gun laws to you guys. For example, no open carry, no concealed carry. What do you think about that? I, I can't imagine it. I, I'm, I'm a native Texan. Um, I am so thankful that I live here and that I'm allowed to protect myself and my family 
it's not about what I carry where I feel safe. No, I carry all the time and I watch people and I can get myself and my children to safety. I think overall I would feel safer if I were carrying all the time. And I could help someone else if say, you know, I'm in the gas station, you know, going to the bathroom or whatever and something happens, I wanna be prepared. Have you guys ever been in that situation? Gratefully, no. And I hope I never have to be. But if I am, I want to be prepared. None of the women I met at the conference had ever actually had to use their weapon. Have you ever needed to use it, your firearm? No, in self-defense, no. Not where I needed to. I got very close at one point in time. I, I've had it ready at times, but I have never actually needed to use it. Our stances are hugely wide. But I did meet one woman who would have. 20 years ago, Sue Kitagua says a man violently attacked her outside of her home in Ohio. When you're completely defenseless at that time and there's no way for you to protect yourself, you, you know, that fear comes over you and, what do I do? If for some reason that would happen and come up where I, where I had an attacker that was actually coming towards me, I would not think twice to shoot. I'm prepared. Do you think that women have a responsibility to be armed as a form of defense or protection? I think they do. I think that women should really stop thinking about this as it's scary, it's something that I probably shouldn't have. But once you start taking accountability for yourself and realizing, well, okay, you know, you're, you, are you situationally aware? Are you looking at where you are in a building? Is there an exit? Are you taking responsibility of, hey, if I need to move, I need to react right now. How would I actually do that? As a woman, I can definitely relate to some of their concerns about safety. But the more the weekend progressed, the more the discussion seemed to escalate. Literally broke every single bone in her body systematically, hung her upside down, filled her vaginal vault with lighter fluid, and burned her from the inside out. The organizers also brought in a social worker who claimed to specialize in psychopathic behavior. If you think about it evolutionarily, was it an advantage at some point to be able to kill somebody? Yes. And there are a handful of things that can activate it in otherwise perfectly normal subjects. Sexual competition, or what we call mate guarding. If you want to get killed, get in a love triangle. Wearing the wrong stuff, showing allegiance to the wrong tribe can absolutely get you killed. Do you think there's an element of being situationally aware at all times that relates to paranoia? It, it's definitely not a paranoia, but it is an awareness that you need to be able to react. Is it survival? Of course it is. Mm -hmm. Is it to the point where it, it's, I guess, maybe it is paranoia, I guess that you could say, but it's, it, we're at this level now within our society that you can't assume everything's gonna be peaches and roses. And that's part of what this training was this weekend. But it wasn't the first time I heard this type of messaging geared towards women. A man attacked me in a parking garage, tried to stab me with an eight inch knife but I carry a pistol. My fear of firearms disappeared when I got my second chance at life. Ads like these featuring women recounting horror stories of rape, home invasions, and random attacks are also used by the NRA as a marketing tactic. Armed and trained women mean fewer rape victims, mean fewer assault victims. And unlike in Canada, women here are exposed to these types of campaigns on a daily basis but I went off site to meet a gun violence victim who thinks this messaging is misleading. When you hear groups like the NRA say to women, having a gun in your house will stop you from getting attacked, what is your response to that? People use that, that analogy all the time that it's gonna make you safer, but I don't see how that, that's true. Because I was shot in 1993 in the back of the head. I was having dinner with a friend. He was a gun owner, so he didn't have it stored properly. It was found during a home robbery and were shot. He did die, my friend did die. I was life flighted to the hospital and spent two weeks in a coma and um, the next seven months relearning my life from reading and writing, walking, talking, picking up the pieces. I live with a bullet in my brain. A lot of women sort of describe the scenario that actually did happen to you. And for them, having a gun kind of makes them feel safer. A gun does not make me feel safer at all. In fact, more than likely, the gun's gonna be taken from you and used against you. 
Case in point, what happened to me? While the gun lobby tells women that firearms are the only way to stay safe, studies show that real-life examples of women successfully using guns in self-defense are few and far between. In fact, FBI data suggests women are 100 times more likely to be killed by a man with a gun than to use a gun to kill a man in self-defense. And here in the US, women are 16 times more likely to be murdered with a gun than women in other high-income countries, including Canada. Susan is using her story to convince legislators that what Texas needs isn't more guns, but better safety training and stricter gun laws. All we're trying to do is pass some common sense policies that help protect people and that keep everybody safe because there's no training on it. I want you to lock your gun up and store it properly and we can't even get that. While some states are moving towards gun safety reform, Texas has relaxed its gun laws since 2013, claiming any form of regulation would infringe on Second Amendment rights. Here's the simple truth. Strict gun control laws do not work. Today, the state of Texas has some of the loosest gun regulations in the country. It legalized open carry and now allows concealed carry on college campuses. And it doesn't enforce live fire training or safe storage laws two practices that experts argue reduce the risk of homicide and accidental deaths among women. But women gun rights advocates don't see it that way. According to FBI data, women are 100 times more likely to be fatally shot by a man than to actually use a gun in self-defense. So I think that those stats are, are um, useful for um, for communicating a narrative because they're so startling, mm -hmm. right? If you have a gun in the home, you're a hundred times more, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of like saying, if you have a pool at your house, you're a hundred times more likely to drown than if you don't. Mm -hmm. So does that mean we need to ban pools or does that mean you need to learn how to swim? How could we most effectively attack a problem like that? Um, training. Whenever the gun decides to go bang is when it goes bang. Your sight's already on the target, so you're ready to go whenever it's ready to go. I'm just wondering if you think that some of those things should be mandatory, a mandatory level of training in order to own a firearm, or a mandatory safe storage law. I would say in a perfect world, I would absolutely love for that stuff to be mandatory. Mm -hmm. In the real world, I don't think that's realistic. Um, in I, America, it's in, not, you in, mean. in my real world, right. I'm an American, right. I live in America. Right. I don't think that's realistic. Once we start putting laws on the books that say you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, just because there's this off chance that some other person, not you, but some other person might do something really bad, I think it's dangerous waters. And it's gonna step on somebody's rights. Meanwhile, only an hour from the gun conference in Austin, a new generation of women are seeking safety, not by arming themselves, but by taking on the gun lobby. Is that your speech? This, yes, it's my speech and my teacher's speech. Have you ever done anything like this before? Yeah. What do we want? Gun control! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Gun control! When do we want as gun sales and gun violence continue to spike in the U.S., these women are leading their high schools in the national walkout for gun reform. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Let's do it. Growing up in Texas, where there's such a strong gun culture, is being shot up at school like a real fear for you guys? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Only a few weeks into organizing the walkout, I had an incident where my school was locked down because only a few blocks away, there was a guy with a gun on top of a building. Um, so it's a very real concern. If guns are what is making people unsafe, then adding more of them to the problem in any context can't be a good idea. These students are holding the NRA and the gun rights community accountable for blocking legislation they say could prevent mass shootings. I am part of a new generation. We are generation lockdown drills stretching from Columbine to the recent shooting in Parkland where kids our age were killed. And right now we're living our lives afraid of the world our parents and grandparents have made. 
You know, an hour away from here, there's a female gun conference taking place. Every person, and especially females, should have um, self-defense lessons and um, understand, you know, how to protect yourself. But I don't think a firearm is necessary. I don't think we have to kill someone to protect ourselves. Right. What would your ideal scenario be? I think that if all the people who own a gun to protect themselves put their effort into just safer gun laws, we would just be a better place to live in. I think that there should be a class and a waiting period, and I think that we should require them to be locked up. All these different things, they just make it harder and make it so that, you know, the people who do have guns will take care of them safely. So many people continue to misunderstand that we don't want to take your guns away, but we don't want to be shot. Are gun deaths sort of the price of admission for living in America? I don't like to think of it that way. I mean, it's, it's, it's putting it very cynically, because right. I don't like to think of any human life as a price of admission. Yeah. If I had to choose between risking the chance that some other person mm -hmm. might misuse a right that I enjoy mm -hmm. versus me giving up that right altogether for myself, I, I wouldn't choose to give up the right for myself. Although Canada is not immune to gun violence, getting shot up in a parking lot, in my own home, or at school isn't really something I think about. But that's not the case for women living here. And whether American women's fears are legitimate or a product of NRA marketing, the question remains, how can we keep women safe in a nation that already has over 300 million guns? And can women really stand up to a $51 billion a year industry? The NRA, their bottom line is the dollar and the influence. So of course they're going to target women because they think that we're weak or they think that um, we're going to fall victim to something and that we can, they're going to save us. And that's just not the case. But I think we're on the right path and I'm really grateful. <laughs>